Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out why the Nissan GTR LM Nismo is front wheel drive with a front mounted engine. Now when I first heard about the Nissan LMP1 car being front engine front wheel drive, I thought it was kind of just this marketing stunt to build hype around the project. But actually there's some very good reasons for why they did it. And so we're going to be kind of looking at four of the reasons here uh, about why this might be advantageous versus their competition. So starting with the first one, center of gravity versus center of pressure. And this kind of comes down to the rule books uh, because basically the rear wing and the rear diffuser are very much so restricted. So everyone's gonna be running something very similar. Whereas the front of the car is much more open for aerodynamic changes. And so because everyone has uh, basically the same thing going on at the rear, maximum downforce at the most efficient way possible, uh, it's difficult to move the center of pressure back. And so when you have a car that's rear wheel drive and you have your center of gravity back here, what you wanna do is put your center of pressure over that so that the car steers neutrally. Now, if your center of pressure is behind your center of gravity for a front wheel drive car, your car is going to be uh, understeering because you've got more uh, load on the rear tires than on the front tires so those front won't be able to hold versus if your center of pressure is uh, above the center of gravity then you're gonna have oversteer because you don't have enough traction on your rear tires so what this does with the Nissan LMP1 car is they're able to move the center of pressure up towards the center of gravity which is closer to the front uh, and they're able to do this efficiently because the front of the car is more open for aerodynamic uh, features and so the cars that are rear wheel drive are trying to pull this back uh, and the, basically the rule book is trying to prevent them from doing that. Uh, whereas in Nissan's case, the rule book is kind of allowing them to bring that center of pressure forward so they can have a very neutrally handling car, even though it's front engine, front wheel drive, which you might think would just be tons of understeer. So they're able to set that up really well. The other thing is energy recovery. So one of the other things they've done, uh, because they have the center of gravity closer to the front, let's just say it's a 70-30 split uh, weight distribution. Uh, not that this is coming from Nissan, this is just kind of a guess, 70-30 split. And let's say under braking, 20% uh, of the load transfers to the front, so it's a 90-10 uh, split. So 90% of the braking done by these front tires. Well, if the front wheels are the ones that have the kinetic energy recovery system hooked up, they're gonna be getting 90% of that load, 90% of the weight of the car available for use in kinetic energy recovery. So if our car was, let's just pull out a, a simple number, a thousand kilograms, then we'd have 900 kilograms that we could use for kinetic energy recovery. Now, if we look at the competition, and say they have a 40-60 split because it's rear wheel drive and they've got a slight rear bias and then under braking they have 60% load transfer to the front. Well that's going to give them 600 kilograms if the car weighed 1,000 kilograms. And so as you can see the Nissan here at 900 versus 600, 50% more uh, mass to use for kinetic energy recovery. So potentially because kinetic energy is a function of mass times velocity squared, they have a potential of 50% more energy that they could recover. Now, yes, the other team could uh, recover energy from both axles, but speaking with Nissan, they said no one currently did this, they just did it from one axle, uh, and there's kind of some strange restrictions around that. But basically, uh, if you do that, if you do recover from both axles, you're gonna be adding weight to your vehicle, and you're gonna be adding complexity. Uh, neither of those are desirable, so basically this comes out as a big advantage for Nissan because they're able to recover more energy under braking. Another thing to talk about is the frontal area of the vehicle, and this comes down to Nissan's engine placement. Because the engine is placed up front and all the drivetrain and complexities are up front, the back of the vehicle is very open. And what this allows for them to do is to have the diffuser exit through the rear of the vehicle rather than out the sides of the vehicle, which is more traditionally done by some of the other teams. So what this looks like when you're looking at the vehicle is you've got your air coming in up front, it's going underneath the vehicle, going up into that front diffuser and traveling out the exit of the vehicle. Now the other cars are gonna have that air coming in underneath the vehicle, going up that front diffuser, and then exiting the sides of the vehicle. So you can see as this car is traveling through the air, its profile is much smaller because it doesn't have this air spilling out where you're essentially decreasing the frontal area because you're allowing that air that's hitting the car to exit out the rear rather than to the sides. And so that's another advantage that they've got going for them as far as aerodynamic efficiency. Now, getting on to the rear diffuser and the rear tires. 
because their car uh, is heavier in the front and the front wheels are doing the driving, they've used the largest tires possible at the front. But because the rear tires don't need to be that large, they've actually used uh, a smaller width, 9 inch versus 14 in the rear, and this gives them a pretty specific advantage. So because their tires are more narrow, two things can happen. One, you can actually increase the range of your diffuser. So you could use a larger diffuser uh, than if you were using wider tires, which everyone else is doing. All the other teams are running 14 inch tires in the rear because they're rear wheel drive and it makes sense uh, from a grip perspective to have as large as possible tires back there based on their weight distributions and the drivetrain of the vehicle. The other thing this does is it gives them a gap uh, and they can manipulate this gap you know, with aerodynamic features so that they don't have spillover from these tires into the rear diffuser. So without that turbulent spillover, this diffuser is gonna be much more efficient, whereas the other teams are gonna to have to choose between using a large diffuser with a lot of spillover, which is what they'll end up choosing, or a smaller diffuser uh, where they have spillover from these tires creating turbulent air and decreasing the efficiency of the diffuser. So overall, there are definitely are some very uh, distinct reasons why Nissan went with this uh, sort of drivetrain, front engine, front wheel drive. And so if you are curious about more information on the Nissan LMP1 car, I will include links in the video description to their channel. Head over and check that out. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.